Hello, my hello, name hello, is Steven hello, Solar, hello. and we're going to talk about adolescent behavior out of abusive homes. Um, my ID number is 237-4470, and this lecture is going to focus on which youth might be at risk for abuse in their house from their parents and other people, and also the possible implications of problems and concerns, behavioral uh, problems that could arise because of this abuse that they've experienced. So uh, this issue is important because of uh, increasing recent child abuse ra uh, rates. They declined in the late 90s actually, but then uh, because of recent economic problems and the uh, uh, the problems that we've had with the economy, um, abuse rates have gone back up. Uh, each year, roughly 6 million children in the United States are involved in child abuse, and uh, there's a disparity between reporting these problems and how many we actually see. Um, the majority of child abuse is from someone that the child knows, a close relative, a parent living in the house, something like that. And uh, it's important because apart from just the physical abuse that they suffer, there's a lot of psychological factors that uh, may arise later on in their lives. Um, so at-risk youth are generally ad adolescents coming from lower socioeconomic status. They're children that have parents that may be unemployed or have financial difficulties and there's stress in the home and a lot of the time that is taken out on the child. Um, so like I said, recent economic problems have contributed to this increase. Um, also adolescents who have parents who are isolated from the community, they're somewhat reserved um, in a social standpoint. They're egocentric, they could be aggressive, they're uh, also at higher risks. Parents who have alcohol and drug use and uh, abuse, things like that, maybe criminals are also more likely to abuse their children. Uh, so some current theories on the prevalence and importance of child abuse uh, is basically a focus on uh, the behavioral and mental health problems that can arise because of this abuse. The majority of researchers do agree that there are correlations uh, because of the abuse and later problems. Um, most disorders can materialize as early as teenage years. You see it a lot in early 20s also, but since abuse can happen, uh, the majority actually happens before four years of age, these problems can arise pretty early on. Uh, criminal behavior in later life is correlated with abuse as well as biological concerns, uh, asthma, emphysema, things like this. And uh, abused adolescents are more likely to continue the cycle with their children because they've been abused, they have a higher chance of later abusing their children. Uh, so one uh, study done by the Office on Child Abuse and Neglect uh, found that Abuse is high among infants, um, a lot under one year and also under four years, which can lead to problems like bruising, respiratory distress, asthma, like I had mentioned, seizures, and with things like shaking a child, it c could lead to things like that. Um, there's also more biological concerns, uh, inadequate nutrition, which is part of the abuse, poor motor development because of uh, brain trauma and things like that. Um, some of the physiological uh, background of this is that synapses are strengthened which uh, code for fear and things like that so the adolescent will become anxious, withdrawn, have poor social skills. they will also show increased juvenile delinquency, uh, ad adult violence when they're older, they'll have eating disorders, depression, lowered self-esteem, just generally things that have uh, poor developmental progress and isolation and things like that. Uh, so current research, uh, another study from the Safe Horizon Health Center, which is kind of a health a help program uh, that could be contacted if you're a victim of abuse or something like that, 
They show that 80% of abused victims have at least one psychological disorder, like eating disorders, depression, anorexia. So that's a very high prevalence. Also, these abused children are 11 times more likely to become involved in criminal activity. And one third of abused children eventually as adults become abusive to their own children. Uh, another study from the Australian Institute of Family Studies in 2010 showed several different degrees of problems including attachment problems where children showed uh, what we talked about was anxious resistant behavior uh, where say their parent could leave the room they'd become very distressed very angry and then if the parent came back they would they would be upset at the parent they would push the parent away things like that, that which is not healthy um, attachment they'd also have uh, trauma uh, something called post-traumatic stress disorder which is found high amongst uh, returning veterans people that have been in wars which um, obviously if it's characterized by people in wars it's not a problem that adolescents should be having there's also learning problems like lower s scores on standardized tests lower academic achievement and um, other problems like this uh, so some limitations of current studies and current research is that uh, we find that there's high numbers of abuse in, so in lower socioeconomic statuses and it's difficult to tell if behavioral problems, learning problems are because of the abuse or are because of their socioeconomic status which is also a causer of things like increased crime, lower standardized test scores. So we're not sure if this correlation is causation. More researchers also needed to identify at-risk youth before they're abused. Generally, things right now focus on helping an adolescent after they've been a victim, but that might be too late to uh, stop some of these problems, and it would be helpful if they could be avoided altogether. Uh, so some future implications are that... Um, Uh, it's important to remove these children from the abusive home as soon as possible. People that, that may notice uh, that a child is a victim of an abusive home could be reluctant to report it just because they believe maybe the parent is still best suited to raise them when in fact it, it is, that's not the case and the child would be better off out of the abusive home. Uh, so there should be increased efforts to arrest these parents, identify the problems, find parents that are also abusing their spouses because there's a high correlation between spousal and child abuse. And then um, we need to consider that adolescents growing up in homes with healthy parents, authoritative parents, have better outcomes in the future. So. The opposite is also true where parents that are abusive have more bleak outcome. Uh, so I would recommend that there's increased reporting from relatives that, that see this, even if that's a difficult thing to do. Further studies should focus on identifying parents that are more likely to abuse ch their children and prevent the problem before it happens. Uh, children also need to speak up and self-report. That's another difficult thing to do, but it would help them. And then um, teachers who are exposed to these children a lot during a regular day should be given um, things like Safe Horizons 10 Signs of Child Abuse, which can help them identify if one of their students are being abused, bring it to someone's attention, and stop the problem. And that's it.